Right, right, right. So as much as I like to take credit for all the questions I seem to <laughs> get them from. No, it's, it's really fun. And I didn't expect it. It's like, what is the hardest thing you ever worked on? Sort of, you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> well, I think it depends on what stage of life you're in. Like, <laughs> yeah, see, there we go. Yeah. yeah. I, think, well. I think it really does. <laughs> if somebody would ask me that in my, I was 21 versus we won't say my yep. age, but where I am now, <laughs> those hard things kind of shift, you know? Like right, right. Just, or if somebody says, what's the hardest <clears throat> thing about parenting? Well, if you ask somebody that's only got a newborn versus somebody who has lived through teenagers, that response would be, you know, a, a, a I little- I agree. Well, yeah. So, um, but yeah, if you want to share your slides right quick, we got about a minute before the start sure. of your talk. Yep, yep. I think I may have figured out what was wrong earlier, and I don't know if I can- completely avoided, but I think I can fix it when it happens. So I will just, so would you prefer that I, if it does happen again, do you prefer that I message you in please the- Please do. Yeah, no, please Zoom do. That was... Or, I mean, the Zoom Slack, the Zoom chat or the Slack yeah. channel. Yeah, yeah. No, please do. I think that was, that was very helpful because if you hadn't, <clears throat> if you hadn't mentioned it, then I, I wouldn't have noticed. And, um, you know, that is a good reminder that I should actually sort of eyeball that channel while it's up. Um, Right. right on. Okay. Let me welcome everybody back. Kind of do the, the you know, the, our sound uh, start here and uh, we'll get started. Welcome everybody to Zeke Week 2021. We're day three and we're just wrapping up lunch. Coming back on today uh, after lunch, our session begins with uh, Christian Cry back again with Cluster Controller Update. And with that, Christian, I think those folks may know who you are, but tell folks who you are again and take it away. Sounds good. Thank you, Amber. Yeah, welcome back. Good to see everybody again. Uh, my name is Christian Krybeck. I, uh, uh, I work at Corelight. I'm part of the open source team where I am a merge master. And so I get to work on sort of a wide range of Zeek things, including the future cluster controller. And that's the topic of my, my talk today. So this is an update on, on work that's been ongoing for a little while now. Uh, but that, that that is still in a sort of, you know, early phase. But it's, you know, it's time for an update. So um, let's see here, make sure that I don't have the same problems we had last time. Okay, cool. Um, so as some of you will know, Zeke's cluster management is changing and we are basically working to retire Z control and Z control. If you are you know, familiar with it is basically our old, uh, and, and established way of maintaining, managing Z clusters. Um, and you know that it's sort of a little dated, right? I mean, so so the I'm I'm going to talk more about this in a minute, but but there are sort of aspects to it that are just not really sort of aligned with how people would do similar things today, and so I've been working on this this replacement for you know, a couple months now, and it's sort of getting to the point where the first bits in it are starting to become usable and 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 demoable, <laughs> but there's um, there's still you know a bunch of stuff there that is to be figured out. Um, and I'm gonna be summarizing some of the uh, input that we've received from the community regarding this because sort of we've, we've gone out a little bit and done some you know, market research, if you will. So, so today is basically just that. So it's, it's, it's an overview of where the project is at. I'll show you some of the, the, the current status and, and what you can do uh, if you were to tinker with it. And then I'll summarize the, the, the roadmap a little bit. So, so the goals here, I, I just already touched some of them, is basically to replace Z control. And so, so what makes Z control quirky is, is basically that it stems from an era where, you know, if you wanted to run Zeek on more than one node, on more than one CPU, it basically meant, okay, let's get some machines because they were single core. <laughs> and, and so that is how all, all of the old Z clusters operated. You had sort of a farm of machines and you needed something to, to manage them. And that explains a lot of the design decisions that are still to this day sort of uh, present in, in Z control. So, so there is SSHing and R-syncing under the hood. Um, there's a bunch of sort of assuming about, you know, the, the distributions that are installed and different things and, and a lot of assumptions about what's there. And uh, in general, sort of a lot of uh, activity that is happening outside of Zeek itself, which, you know, is, was okay for the time and, 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 and we're seeking to change a little bit. Because um, one of the things that was or is good about Z control is that it's really featureful. There's a ton of stuff you can do with it. So the goal now is to basically replace that with something that is a little bit more aligned with how you would build things today, sort of a, a more service oriented sort of approach to things. Um, and that, that as a sort of natural consequence would also sort of shift things into Zeek itself. 
Um, uh, containers are everywhere nowadays, so there's, there's an explicit goal there in, in making it easy to run these things in containers, um, managing Zeek itself in containers. And I, I need to stress that um, while sort of impressive in its feature set, feature parity with Zeek control is, is not an explicit goal in this. So, so it's, a, it's a guideline, as I put it here, so we'll certainly try to get close. But it's pretty much invariable. I think that at some point, you guys will, like, those of you who are sort of deeply in this tool, will try to use it in some way and find like, oh, something doesn't work anymore. And then we look forward to your pull request. <laughs> but no, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, right, so that's, that's what's going on here. There is some, uh, so the, the, the best way to follow this right now, I think, other than uh, looking at GitHub itself for, for merges, pull requests, and so forth, is basically a design doc and an architecture diagram that I'm about to get to. And if you pull up the slides in the future, um, those things are links, and you can, you can find them there. As, as I've been working on this, you know, things have shifted a little bit. So don't take, you know, the, the architecture diagrams or the design docs sort of as, as, as absolute sort of ground truth of, of, of what's going on in the code right now. But they are still sort of, you know, the North Star and, uh, guiding the whole thing and they'll get updated over time but sort of right now the, the the time is probably better spent sort of in code than in the document so um this is all credit due to robin who put those together quite a while ago um but it sketches the um the architecture of what such a distributed cluster so a, a cluster spanning multiple machines could look like or will look like in the in the future and so the idea is here that the the yellow boxes are three separate machines <clears throat> And the two on top are basically two machines where Zeek is actually doing work. Whereas the one at the bottom is what we call the controller, which is a, an entity that is going to be present in every cluster in the future that you can talk to with some tool chain that allows you to manage the, the cluster. And the machines on top are basically all you know, running part of this infrastructure. The, the, the reddish nodes there are what you would currently call the Zeek cluster which we sort of increasingly have been referring to as the data plane because it's sort of where the actual work is happening. And, and you'll notice that, that both of the boxes up here have what we call an agent. Um, and the agents are basically the points of contact in every sort of physical entity of the cluster, in every cluster instance, as we call it here, that the controller, which is this guy down here, basically talks to and gets updates from um, to do its job. And then as a user, you just interface to the whole thing or with the whole thing with um, a tool called Z Client that is sort of running down here, that is sort of your, your gateway into this, in the, this whole system. And so this is basically the, the complex scenario if you have clusters that are big enough also today to need you know, multiple machines. For a lot of people, this will probably look more like this, where the whole thing is basically compressed down into a single machine. So you still have this thing uh, we Call the supervisor, where you know I'm I'm somewhat unsure to which extent this is on your radar, but I'll be showing you some uh, sort of functionality of that um, later in this talk, where you know this is sort of the in Zeek sort of service manager that has been in Zeek for quite a while but hasn't been used very much. That is again sort of running a cluster agent and a cluster controller, and now you just inter uh, sort of inter interface with the whole system via Zeek client talking to a controller that you know, is running in the same Zeek physical instance as, as the rest of, you know, the, the, the traditional cluster. And so for anybody who gets, you know, by with a single machine that can keep up with traffic, this is basically going to be the model in the future. So key takeaways is basically you have sort of this, this, this strong reliance on this supervisor as a, a service manager inside Zeek. There is, for any kind of cluster you run in the future, there is a cluster controller and there is a cluster agent that is present on every single physical machine that your cluster comprises. It could also be multiple, you know, on a single machine if you're starting to run sort of, you know, standbys and so forth. But those are all, you know, concepts that are still a little bit um, out in the future. So the, the APIs between those things are somewhat unsurprisingly currently all via broker or middleware. Um, and they're sort of structured in uh, cluster and agent specific APIs right now. The actual mode of communication is just event pairs. So like, you know, uh, the, the, the various entities in this cluster look out for certain events and can respond uh, accordingly with response events. And they basically target what you would expect around lifecycle management and, and health monitoring and, and so forth. 
And the best reference for this at the moment is probably still, again, the design doc, just to get a sort of a, a flavor of you know, what, that, what that looks like. So demo, I, I, I have a small demo. This is probably not as immediately accessible um, as the other one was in my, in my uh, ZKG talk, but um, there is some stuff here that I can show you. And so this is all running code that um, is currently in Zeek. So technically you can try this, but you do need a little bit of plumbing um, to pull it together so that things are configured just right. And I'm using a repository here where I've sort of collected this. And if people are interested in, in replicating this, um, hit me up in chat and, and, and I, can, I can show you some things. But basically this is um, just a way to, to run um, the new uh, controller and agent frameworks from Zeek. Uh, via the supervisor. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to run Zeek. We'll be, we'll be capturing some packets in a moment as well. And if you do this locally on a machine, then it's often a good idea to use dash C. So it ignores invalid checksums because they're often you know, not computed in time before the packets are seen by Zeek. And we want to use dash J, which enables the supervisor. And then I have a couple of sort of test configurations here where you know, there, there are sort of different modes of communication, whether the agent uh, com uh, contacts the controller or the controller contacts the agent. This is sort of all stuff that is in flux right now and that I'm experimenting with. So I'm, uh, I'm going to launch one where an agent is connecting to a controller. And that sort of just sits there right now and does nothing because it hasn't been told to do anything yet. And as a way to show you what the, the process structure of Zeek looks like, I've, um, I've uh, built out a little you know, script. This is just a, a shell wrapper that shows me any um, Zeek process trees that I currently have in the system. And so what you see here is a couple things. So you see that right over here, there is sort of a, a root node that is like how I just started Zeek. And then as part of running it with this uh, with the supervisor, um, it forked of what we call a stem. The analogy here is sort of you know stem cell without the controversy, <laughs> uh, where, where, where this is a uh, fork that happened very early in, uh, in Zeke's lifetime, and that can still develop sort of, you know, fork off all kinds of other processes. Uh, right now, the, the thinking about this is mostly along sort of Zeke instances itself, Zeke processes itself uh, or themselves, um, but in the future, that could also be sort of other things. And so, so going back to the, the diagram that I just showed before, you basically see here that there is a, a controller running and, and one agent, and that has gotten a name, and it's just, I, I, I've named it instance one here in my, in my Z configuration. And so with that in place, I can use um, a prototype of the future Z client. This is currently available to you um, when you configure Zeek with a config flag called dash dash enable Zeek client, otherwise it's skipped. And it just lives in a in a separate Zeek repository right now. I can I can um, show you very uh, quickly what this looks like. And this is just this is just Python right now. Oops, sorry. Um, and has a very limited set of commands, sort of. And it's really this is this is prototyping what that client will look like in the future. We are not at all sure that it will stay Python. Um, but it's convenient to do this in Python right now, just because it's quick, right? Like that rapid prototyping is 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 useful. Um, and it's been a really nice way to sort of tinker with the, <laughs> the, the Python broker bindings, which all of this is based on and which I've um, like been liking quite a bit. But anyway, so, so things you can do right now are, as you can see, sort of a little limited, but you can say, for example, um, show me the instances that are connected to this, this client right now. Ignore the exact way this is reported right now because you have to know what it means, but I'll just tell you, sort of, this is the name of the one instance that is connected right now. This is the machine that it is on. This is localhost because we're doing everything sort of locally right now. And because the agent connected to the controller, the agent itself is not listening on a port. Otherwise, that would be the port that the agent is listening on. <clears throat> And so things you can do right now, well, for example, you can push over um, uh, a Z configuration. So I have, let me show it to you first. I have a, um, a simple you know, cluster definition that is very sort of similar looking to what you might know from, from Z control where you basically spell out your nodes, right? And so this is basically running or defining a single worker, a single logger and a single manager. And I can, um, I can push this over now 
to the controller and the controller can relay that to the agent and then that um, that configuration should come up. What am I doing wrong? Uh, I said config, sorry, I'm just not typing the right thing. Um, there you go. And as you can see, so that config got pushed over to um, the controller, the controller related to the agent. And now you see that these processes are forked off of um, the same stem, but are now basically running as a totally normal, you know, Z cluster. There are actually, uh, there are actually logs in here I go in here. This is just my setup for, for tinkering where you see logs being built up just like in a, in, a, in, a, in a normal cluster. And because we're using the supervisor, we're sort of starting to see sort of the first benefits of the whole thing. So uh, there is some you know, amount of resilience at this point. So let's say I, I shoot down a node, I'm gonna shoot down uh, the manager and you'll see that it comes right back, right? So like this is, this is the supervisor's built in um, sort of lifecycle management of the nodes that it that it manages. Um, I can also um, I can also run this in different configurations. So, for example, you don't have to um, you don't have to run everything as one Zeek instance. You can run the controller in one, the uh, the agent in another, and still run the whole thing on on one machine. But I, you know, I might run a little tight if I show that right now. So I'm, I'm going to skip that part. But this is sort of the kind of thing that you can do right now. Like again, I have to stress, like I think nobody should try to really run their cluster with this right now. Um, the parts that we're focusing energy on right now are very much around sort of uh, good error reporting um, and 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 sort of like all the things that can go wrong as you do this, and not so much like let's pile on everything, you know, that we could sort of want in there as features right now, and then and then do the robustness sort of later. So this is why, why the on-ramp here is sort of a little, a little slow. So I think that was all I wanted to demo here. Um, I'm gonna go back to, to my slides. And so um, next steps. So build out test suite is, uh, this was a biggie and that was sort of the one that's been um, keeping me quite busy. And um, so the, the observation here is that this is, this is cluster stuff and we want to have really solid footing for testing this in the future. And the way we've been testing clusters in our current test suite has been sort of, um, yeah, I mean, um, workable, but not super pleasant to deal with. This has basically been B tests built in features for, for running stuff in the background. <clears throat> and so nowadays there are clearly better ways to do this. And so, so we've been building out Docker Compose setups that, that let you do this. And there is actually, um, this isn't really a demo, but there's a quick thing that I, I wanted to show you here. And so you heard Robin earlier today talk about the Docker images that we are now building, for example, whenever we merge something into master. And so I've been building on top of this to get test infrastructure for the future cluster work. And so I have this in, in, in sort of my, one of my internal pull requests. And when you, when you look at the actions that are running here, you can see that that they're directly sort of derivative. So, so this is the, the the one on the left here is the stuff that is that is always there at the moment. So there you you will see that a Docker image is being built, and then I derive from that with a next sort of or with a I, I chain a job off of that that actually uses what is now our test setup um, for the cluster. And so this relies on the image that we just built for a Docker Compose setup where I can basically just like spell out a cluster in a couple of you know, lines of, of code and then run a test suite against this. And there is a first test that is still you know, very humble, but there is a first test actually running here that um, it pops this whole thing into uh, uh, Docker Compose, uh, runs the client and, and verifies that some output is correct. So, so this, is, this is a starting point, but this took a little bit to get right. And, and there was a, a lot of focus on that. All right. and so. So other next steps, of course, so if you go back to the design doc, you'll notice that the, the, it, it outlines a lot more commands at this point um, than are currently there. I mean, you saw there's just those two. Um, so a lot of that will happen. And then um, a lot of work around resilience and persistence. So the idea is definitely that um, controller and agent should be able to maintain state. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this will work out in practice, because I think I'll, I'll finally be touching a bunch of the, the, the data, data store work as well, which I've only sort of tinkered a little bit in, in the past, and, and we'll see how that goes. And 
The final point here in the, in, in the top here is uh, around naming. So if you're familiar with how infrastructure is bootstrapped in, in let's say in Docker Compose, then you know that everything is around naming and, and an IP address is not really an entity that is supposed to be predictable or, or relied upon. And if you're familiar with how the cluster works at the moment, it's a mix. So the broker side of things is quite good at dealing with names. You can oftentimes sort of, you know, specify an IP address or a name sort of in, in, in the same sort of API call. Um, but in other places, we very much rely on having IP addresses for things. And so that'll need some, some sort of straightening out. And so overall, sort of the next steps are sort of like a bunch of work that is waiting here still that should come together, hopefully pretty nicely for 4.2. When 4.2 comes out, look out for announcements around this, probably some blog posts, or we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, webinar, maybe, I don't know, but whatever you think is right, Ember. <laughs> and that'll be the time to start tinkering with what's there and sort of do some, some sanity checking. I guess that stuff sort of basically right for how you would expect this to work in the future. And then hopefully starting with Zeek 5, you can actually sort of start to transition your clusters over and, and, and retire um, Zeek controls. And so beyond this roadmap sort of, of next steps, there is sort of, uh, sort of, there, there are sort of the, the, the bigger themes of thinking uh, around the cluster. And I was sort of mentioning, you know, market research earlier. But what we did was we basically um, reached out to some of you where we know uh, you are running sort of larger um, Z clusters, and we just like uh, talked to you guys. Um, uh, what do you like? What do you not like about um, Z control? And 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 how would you like this to sort of work in the future? Um, so the first thing uh, I want to say here is that if you now go, but what about me, and we didn't talk to you, then please ping us because we would still very much like to talk to you. We just started sort of with the folks that we know are running the cluster. So this is, this is an ongoing process. And so the big themes that emerged here were basically around configuration, connectivity, health monitoring, and management. And I, okay, I'm, gonna sort of, I'm just sort of going to touch some of those points. Um, but they, they, they were sort of really illuminating because they told us that some of the original assumptions that we had are probably no longer valid. So, so we've been working from this assumption sort of that large clusters tend to be sort of or should be homogeneous, that basically all the configurations are the same and so forth. And that is not necessarily the case. So several of you are running clusters differently in, um, in different or uh, parts of your cluster differently uh, in different corners of your network. And so that's an interesting one. Um, several of you indicated that it is really great to hear that the model is not going to be based on SSH anymore because apparently, you know, unsurprisingly, in larger uh, environments, you need to get permission to open up ports and so forth, uh, which brought up interesting ideas also sort of around how this existing agent controller topology could simplify connectivity sort of across the cluster a little bit more broadly. Then health monitoring, like I said, like was just sort of a really big theme. Um, people are building their, their you know, telemetry, their monitoring sort of outside of Zeek right now, which is doable, but which is a lot of work and would be nice if we could sort of come that way uh, within Zeek itself. And uh, I I think there was Seth, I think, talking about this, right, in, in, in the upcoming session. But so there is a lot of work going on in Zeek actually at the moment around telemetry. So that's that's good news. Um, and then around management. So there's one biggie here that I sort of glossed over in the diagram earlier, which is like we should just we just showed system D there. And and so nothing in this model sort of requires system D. The idea is that you can run this with a standard modern service manager. You know, in your OS, and for many folks these days, that is systemd, but you don't have to. Okay, so you can still like launch these things directly in your container, whatever seems right there, sort of. Um, um, but if we could make this model collaborate with systemd or sort of assist systemd in how it does its own management of processes, um, that would be quite helpful. And so this is sort of a topic I, I, I would like to dig into a little bit because it has, systemd has so many nice primitives for, for managing services. Um, and then um, the more sophisticated users, <laughs> you are, yeah, the whole set of people here is sophisticated, but some folks in particular are already sort of thinking about auto scaling and so forth, standbys and, and all of that. And that is an interesting one. And, and I can only say like, we'll tackle that bit by bit, I think, because I don't think we, we really know yet. Um, to which extent that is part of the architecture as opposed to the uses that you build on top of that. And so I've talked for quite a while and I'm done. Um, 
hit us with feedback about the cluster, tinker with it if you like. I, like I said, it's sort of a little early still and uh, stay tuned. And other than that, I am done and look forward to your feedback. Thanks, Christian. Um, another good talk from you. Uh, up next, we're gonna start letting the uh, lightning people, lightning talk folks in. These next talks are gonna be very fast paced. Um, they're each, each speaker has um, five minutes uh, to present. Um, and once I'll be timing them, and if they go over their five minutes, you're gonna see me come back on camera and say,